friends. So this morning I was minding my own business sleeping. And then I rolled over to look at my phone and noticed that I got an email from Ableton saying that they had released a new public beta. And within this public beta, almost every single piece of user feedback that they got when Ableton 12's new features rolled out is addressed in this new update. It's insane. But what we're going to focus on today is the new Auto Shift device, which is essentially Auto Tune built into Ableton. And it's not just a one for one replacement for like Auto Tune, but what's so amazing about this device is that it's integrated into Ableton's scale awareness system, which means the creative applications are like through the roof. Let's check it out. Okay, so this is Auto Shift, and they have pretty much added every single feature that I would ever want inside of a pitch shifting, pitch correcting device. So first of all, let's go ahead and record me singing. Um, here's this riff that I have in G sharp or A flat Dorian. Sounds like this. So because I'm a human, <laughs> I can't sing things perfectly, right? I'm going to waver in my pitch. So you can see that my pitch is wavering up and down when I go sharp or when I go flat. And that's what's represented here in this uh, meter. So let's take a closer look at what happened when I sang this. Right? So right now, auto pitch has access to every single note, and it's also got a lot of smoothing on it. So what's happening is, is that there's not much changing about my pitch, but let's go ahead and solo my pitch by itself and explore what can happen. So first of all, what I can do is I can start eliminating notes that I don't want the auto shift to use. So let's go ahead and just eliminate everything except for the note B. <laughs> let's see what happens. <laughs> it's actually kind of great. And I got to say, that's actually pretty impressive. The algorithm that they've created for auto shift actually sounds pretty good. Let's go ahead and play this with the keys. <laughs> so now it's only allowing a B note to pass through. So what's cool about this is we can be creative when we can choose certain notes for auto shift to, to use. So let's, for example, choose, I don't know, an F sharp and an E flat. And so that sounded kind of whack. Let's go ahead and turn the smoothing down a little bit so that it uh, repitches faster. <laughs> right? Super cool. I love this thing. I I'm already having so much fun with this, y'all. Now, of course, you can choose whatever notes you want, and as you can see, it sets the scale to custom. But something that's really great is you can simply just turn on the scale awareness system. And this just represents a quantum auto shift, sorry for the dad joke, uh, in audio processing, because now we can use the scale awareness system all throughout our Ableton set to take the pitch of whatever's coming in and auto pitch it to the scale that we're working within. In this case, again, A flat Dorian. So now take a listen to my vocal. So in this setting, we've kind of got that like T-Pain thing going on, right? Where like, you know, the, the pitch is, is unnaturally shifting very quickly. But, you know, if you turn up smoothing, you can get, you know, it, it defaults at 50. I could probably get away with something a little bit lower for this part, maybe like 30 milliseconds. Let's take a listen now. Right. So auto shift comes with a bunch of features that other uh, pitch shifters come with, such as I could change the pitch, for example. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? And then, of course, you can shift the formant. So, you know, uh, what happens when you take a pitch and then you shift it very far away from its original pitch, you can also shift what the throat actually sounds like. Let's say I wanted to make this go an octave down. Now I sound like the bass voice guy, right? <laughs> and if I wanted to go up an octave, I could shift it all the way up and get kind of more of like a... And you can hear those little garbles in there. So, you know, you could try to take the strength down a little bit, turn up the smoothing. 
Now, this is an extreme pitch shifting situation, but you get what I'm saying. So I'm going to return this to zero. Another thing you can do is you can turn on uh, pitch following or formant follow. And what this will do is this will automatically adjust the formant knob as you are moving away from the original pitch that you sang. So this isn't going to have much of an effect right now because I sang pretty good. I sang pretty close to the original pitch. But for example, if I turned off this mode and just left it on B, I'll turn the strength back up. Let's take a listen to this without formant follow. And now let's turn formant follow up. You can hear that it's kind of trying to adjust to make it so that my voice sounds like it's natural, or at least as close as natural as it can do when it's doing this extreme pitch shifting. Okay, so let's go back to scale awareness mode because these are all controls. You know, you can also add, you know, auto vibrato and kind of, you know, have it come in a little bit. <laughs> these are all controls that come with other pitch correction style plugins and stuff like that that you can get but here is where auto shifts gets so super exciting it's integrated into ableton's scale awareness system so okay you're ready to get your mind blown because this is something that's blowing my mind so i'll duplicate this track now we have the same track on two different tracks here so you know let's take a listen to these together <laughs> All right, so thus far they're doing exactly the same thing. I'm gonna turn the uh, form and follow down on both of them, okay? And I wanna show you something else. Let's maybe take the, the smoothing and turn it up on this one. On this one, for example, I could simply just shift the uh, fine pitch a little bit. So this is a super fast way to just take a vocal and double it, right? I can just double a vocal super fast and I could make one have some vibrato and the other one not. So yeah, just exploring that alone is crazy, but here's where it gets super nuts. Are you ready for this? Because I was not ready for this. Check this out. I can actually take the scale degrees and shift them up. All right, you ready? This is so nuts. Right? Are you kidding me? What an incredible thing that we can do now. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this again, and let's maybe take this third one and we'll go up, uh, I don't know, four scale degrees. All right, we gotta add some reverb. Come on, come on, let's go maybe something like this. All right, we gotta add a drums and bass line, come on. So this is just so amazing for so many different reasons. And I'm sure that your head is now spinning with like the possibilities with this thing. I mean, I don't know. You could you could take any sample, right? And just immediately create harmonies out of like one sample just so quickly. I mean, it's just totally nuts. So something else that I wanted to point out about this that's just so nuts is that um, right now, if you hover over the title bar, of auto shift, you can see that it creates 32 milliseconds of latency. And this is common because, you know, you're asking this device to analyze your terrible singing, <laughs> right? It's analyzing my terrible singing and it needs to take some time to kind of come up with the right pitches. But they decided to add because this is Ableton Live, okay? Remember, this is software designed to be used on stage live. They've added a live mode. So check out what happens when I click this. If I hover over the title bar now, oh my God, zero samples of latency okay and as you can see i've got a lot of these devices and yeah i have a you know pretty powerful m1 macbook pro here and then you can see up at the top two percent we've got three of these devices ripping right now i'm going to turn them all in live mode and let's see just if the uh you know if if the audio fidelity has suffered at all I mean, I don't know about you, that sounds pretty good to me. Incredible, right? So we've only just begun to scratch the surface of the amazing things that Auto Shift can do. So in the analyzing section over here, you can see that we have the ability to feed MIDI into this thing. So one thing I could do is I'm just gonna go ahead and record another vocal. Let's just, uh, let's just do that for the fun of it. Go ahead and switch this to my right channel, here we go. All right, 
So <laughs> I'm sorry about abusing your ears here, um, but let's go ahead and grab another auto shift. We're going to slap it in here. Now check this out. You can receive MIDI from another track. So I'm going to turn on MIDI in and, and check it out. It gives you this whole representation of the keyboard and look at all the options. This is incredible. So let's go ahead and choose the, uh, the, the, the keys. So this track right here has got a bunch of different keys in it. So it sounds like this. So let's go back to this track and let's choose my keys as the input for this vocal. So we're going to choose the drifty keys and now check this out. Okay, I'm just so excited about this. Like, I am so happy with this. I am so excited. Check this out. You can also do it in polyphonic mode. So check this out. <laughs> oh my God. All right, let's put it back on. All right, so... You'll have to forgive me because like I actually some of these features I'm just kind of opening up and using for you know the first time like this is I just can't believe this y'all anyway um so I just have to point out how amazing this is like if it's on live mode for example I could legitimately like play my keys right but if I pl if I hit play Oh, I'm just blown away. That is just so cool. So it looks like you can choose how many voices you have in this situation. So let's try eight. Let's try huge chords. <laughs> so awesome. So yeah, I mean, we're talking real time polyphonic editing of the pitch of voices and honestly the pitch of any sample as of right now we're just using my vocal right we could use kind of anything I, this is just so amazing I, i'm just totally blown away so something else we haven't even looked at yet is this uh this lfo page which it looks like you can toggle on and off let's go ahead and i don't know let's go ahead and play the keys along with this <laughs> Let's put it back on mono mode. So something I think that would be really cool is to uh, modulate the formant. So it looks like you can send the LFO to different destinations. Let's go ahead and send it to the formant. Let's do it really fast. Okay, that's super cool. Then volume. So of course you can do it with pitch because you know, we're talking. is just amazing y'all looks like we can also sync the lfo and it also looks like we've got a bunch of different shapes so okay here we go random sample and hold let's sync that to the clock let's go with maybe like an eighth note So admittedly, I'm an Ableton fanboy, and I'm just starting to crack this device open myself, but there is so much more that you can do with Auto Shift, and of course, I'm going to be adding a bunch, a bunch of lessons to my Ableton online courses. Uh, if you didn't know, I teach Ableton in an online course format, and to my knowledge, these are the biggest, most thorough, and most 
uh, wide in scope Ableton courses that you can get. So if you want to support me and the channel and you vibe with my teaching style, definitely check out my Ableton online courses because it's going to be chock full of auto shift content here in the coming weeks, as well as all of the other new amazing features that they just added to the public beta. So either way, if you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe. Much love, everybody. Uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you.